Pakistan, one of the most beautiful and diverse countries. It is filled with traditions, cultures, and oral histories. From north to the south, east to the west, from dewdrops of the fresh spring flowers to the snowy white glaciers of high mountains, all comes under one nation, Pakistan. Pakistan, the land of purity, starting from a very inspiring personality and father of the nation, our Kai, Kaili Azim Muhammad Ali He was the founder of Pakistan and he served as the leader of all India Muslims, which led to the formation of Pakistan and his side by side, our national poet, Alama Iqbal, who first saw the dream of this land, the land of Pakistan. Moving on to Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, his Aligarh movement led to the foundation for Pakistan which resulted in separate homeland for Muslims in 1947. Now let's talk about the history of Pakistan. In August 1947, the British left India after more than 300 years. British India was partitioned into two independent nation states, India and Pakistan. An estimated 15 million people were uprooted as Muslims began tracking to East and West Pakistan, while Hindus and Sikhs were enough to understand this. We have to look at the Britain's rule. When the British came to rule, they used a now infamous strategy of divide rule. They enforced specific measures, like the scientific census in 1871. This is Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He was the leader of the Muslim League. He, were, he also won independence and initially backed Hindu Muslim unity. By the 40s, this changed and he wanted an independent state. In 1931, Britain dragged India into World War II. Most Indians were not happy about it, a movement to have the British leave India internally. That resulted in nationwide protests against British rule. In 1943, famine hit Bengal. Up to 3 million people lost their lives and many Indians believed that the famine was caused by colonial exploitation. At the end of World War II, Britain was cash strapped. They realized they couldn't afford to run India much longer. They decided they would withdraw from the subcontinent, but didn't put a date on it. With talk of transfer of power tensions ran high in the country, the British were afraid that this kind of violence could lead to a civil war. They decided that they wanted to speed up their exit from India. But all that changed when a new vice came to India, and minor royal lord Louis Mountbatten was appointed in March 1947. His job was to resolve the issue of partition by negotiating between Jinnah and Nehru, and to try and get Britain out of the country as soon as possible. In June 1947, he made a shocking announcement. The country would be partitioned. India would be independent by August 1947, almost a whole year earlier than intended. But who would divide the Indian Empire? This is Cyril Redcliffe. He was the British lawyer tasked with breaking up India by taking into consideration villages, differences, and railways and canals. He had never traveled to anywhere east of Pakistan before he was flown to India and given 36 days to carve up the map of South Asia. Redcliffe drew the line which cut the states of Bengal and Punjab into two. He didn't award the princely state of Kashmir either country. He later admitted that he had re relied on outdated maps and census reports because it was too hot to undertake field work in Redcliffe finished two weeks before independence, but the Western decided to keep the borders of the new country secret till after independence. On the 14th of August 1947, Pakistan declared its independence. Day after, so did India. At the time, neither country knew where the borders were. The British Army, which had suppressed Indians and crushed the world, exited India after more than 300 years with hardly a short fight and only seven casualties. But they left two countries in complete turmoil. The horror of partition. Partition unleashed a wave of bloodshed. One of the central flashpoints was Punjab. People suddenly found themselves in the wrong country had to flee from their ancestral homes on foot, on bullock carts or by train. More than 7 million people traveled from India to Pakistan. Another 7 million traveled from Pakistan to India. Mobs hit in the bushes along the way waiting to slaughter people. 
Hindus and Sikhs killed one another. Many of the refugees succumbed to hunger or thirst, or were murdered along the way. Train carriages dubbed blood trains, which carried refugees often arrived at their destination with corpses. Even children weren't spared. Some women were killed by their own fathers and brothers. Homes and businesses were looted and burned down. Some have likened the horrors of operation to the Holocaust. Refugee camps were set up in India and Pakistan to try to house the millions of refugees. But many more people lost their lives because of the poor conditions and disease in the camps. The massive and sudden migration changed the demographic of South Asia forever. Almost all Hindus fled cities with crime, like Karachi, which were populated with just under 50% of Hindus before partition. More than 300,000 Muslims were forced to flee Delhi alone. Partition separated thousands of families. More than 70 years later, many families are still divided. Pakistan and India remain bitter rivals. They have fought three wars over Kashmir and one over East Pakistan, which eventually became Bangladesh. Today, there are still disputes over water and borders. More than seven decades later, more than 1.6 billion people still live in the shadow of partition. This is the map of India and Pakistan after the partition in 1947. This is how India and Pakistan was partitioned, and we gain our independence of our land, Pakistan. But I have one question. Do you think you have done anything till now for your country, your homeland, your Pakistan? The responsibilities to ensure the future of our homeland, our Pakistan, is the duty that Qaid, Sir Sayyid, and Allama Iqbal gave us. Think on it. Because you are the future of your country. Thanks.